Good morning and welcome back to my kitchen. In this week's video, I've got a few things I wanna share with you. We're gonna start with the grocery haul and how much I spent to feed my family of five. We're gonna meal prep this week. I've got uh, recipes for the slow cooker, cooking ones, eating twice, if you're a big fan of those uh, previous videos. There are some recipes in here that you can add to your repertoire. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it below. That's one of my most popular videos. I'm gonna share with you how I make ahead breakfast for the week because the morning is the busiest time of the day, except for the night time, which is also busy. And then when the baby's crying in between, just kidding. <laughs> uh, so the mornings can be hectic around here. So if I make ahead a breakfast that I can just reheat quickly for the kids, uh, that just makes life a lot easier for all of us in the morning especially now the boys are playing sport because I want to make sure they have a lot of protein in their diet so that they're not hungry as soon as they get to school because you know what that means they want to snack 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 and those processed snacks cost a bomb so if you're interested in cooking on a budget cooking what's easy saving some money on your grocery bill then keep watching was there anything else that I'm doing we're just gonna see how this week plays out okay all right let's get started so I've just come back from Coles and I have spent uh, on this day, 5th of October, for all of this stuff, I spent $175. Now I realized when I recorded this that there was all other details on my receipt that is irrelevant, but that is the main thing. I'm gonna feed my family of five for $175. So on the menu this week, I pretty much just walked in and I didn't have a huge list. I just wanted, I knew I wanted to buy some fresh stuff and whatever was on special. So that's how I arranged my meals this week. So silver side is down to $10 a kilo at Coles. I've got a bit of time to use this up and this is about a kilo and a half. So I'm planning to do a cook once, eat twice with this. I've got some mince uh, that's on a markdown as well. So for a kilo, now I'm going to be making some mushroom, little mushroom sauce, little mini meatballs, if not like a beef stroganoff kind of mini meatball dish with that. I've got some sausages. I want to prepare some breakfast ahead. I've got some chicken thigh fillets. I want to make some mandarin chicken because mandarins are in season. I just got some lunch meat for the kids. Uh, and then I got a cabana for their lunches. And I also got a little bit of feta because I want to make a frittata and that's really nice sprinkled on top. I need some gloves. I use bicarb soda in cooking and home cleaning. Yes, Baba. I needed some sugar and some corn flour. If you've watched me before, you know I love to use corn flour and thicken in sauces up. They were out of normal sized cans, so I had to pay 60 cents more for less corn, so that was helpful. I needed some chicken stock, nice way to flavor up your meals. And this is all of the fruit and veggies I got. These are down to a dollar each. These are on sale. These are $4.90 a kilo. I'm gonna wilt this in my frittata. That's gonna be a side salad. I was gonna try and grill my own chicken and do like chicken salad with crunchy lettuce for the kids. But then when I got there and I saw that, um, you know, I had to get a whole stack of chicken because I didn't have any in the deli. So it's gonna cost me 16 bucks just to get chicken breasts for that dish. And I wanted thighs for this dinner. It just seemed too hard. So we're gonna do lunch meat and I've got to put that back, but that's okay, we'll use it up. I've got some tomatoes for some make ahead breakfast. Celery's down to $2. I remember paying like $5.90 for this. So that prompted my silver side idea from over there. These are down to $1.90. I'm gonna try pickling it. Wish me luck, see how that goes. Bag of onions, these are down to $4 a bag. They used to be like $7 a bag. Watermelon around, I had a nice rich color. I hope that tastes good. Got a bit squished along with my poor bruised rock melon. These are $2 each. These are down to $2.90 a kilo, down to $3.50 a kilo, $3.50 a kilo. Frittatas, make ahead breakfast, and I'm about to make a sanger because I am banging after going shopping. And I am looking forward to trying this seasoned porchetta. I don't know how you really pronounce it, but I feel like real bogan, like Kath and Kim, like champagne, poor cheddar at the deli. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna try that, that looks really nice. So stick with me if you wanna see how I turn all of this into breakfast, lunch, dinner for my family this week. You can hear the baby in the background, I gotta go. Time is a-wasting. First up, we're gonna be preparing our mini meatballs. This time we're gonna make it stroganoff style. And we're gonna start by soaking one cup of rolled oats with one cup of milk. Now I realized when I was making this recipe, some of these ingredients I just already had in the pantry or the fridge. So if you feel like that's a bit of a rip off compared to me just showing you my grocery list, let's just minus the $15 it was for the hand soap and the um, Metamucil ripoff version. And we'll put that towards the, you know, the oats, 
the mushrooms that were left over from the week before, the extra couple of eggs that I used, which I had forgotten and took out last week's carton, there was a few left in that, and the bread capsicum. So I think we'll call it even after $15, um, taken from those items that I didn't actually cook with. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and use the recipe book that I shared with you last week and gather my ingredients that we need for some crazy carrots that we're gonna put in a slow cooker. So that recipe book I was sharing, I was about to donate because I haven't used it in so long and I was like, being annoying like the kids are when you tell them to go pack up their toys and then they start playing with them that's me but with this book all right so for crazy carrots we need french onions soup a little bit of butter brown sugar and it called for half a kilo of carrots about 500 grams or so so half a bag of your carrots that you get and as i was with well, the butter something else that i always have on hand let me know if that's something that you find like irritating in videos, if they use things that aren't included, I just have a well-stocked fridge and pantry. Oh, here I am just pointing out that I paid more money. This isn't like home brand. So I paid more money for this type of butter and there's no lines that say like your 50 gram mark. I'm like, where's the thing? Where's the line? <laughs> I had to pay more for this butter and there's no line. Ripped. So we're just gonna guesstimate 60 grams of butter. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna microwave that to melt it. Another reason why I wanted to try this recipe was because it had French onion soup added to it. And this is something that we're gonna flavor our meatballs with as well. This is something that you can do to flavor lots of meals, even make gravy out of it. And it's such a versatile ingredient, which is like 55 cents from Coles. So that's something that you can cook with on a budget and to help your food be flavorful without spending a lot of money. So I'll mention that uh, video before about saving money on your grocery bill. So I will link that video below if you're interested. We're just gonna go ahead and add our sliced carrots to our slow cooker along with our 60 grams of melted butter. And we're also gonna add some brown sugar. It asks for two thirds of a cup of brown sugar, but I just feel like that's way too much. So I'm just gonna go in with one quarter and I can always add some more later. Even that I feel like is too much for vegetables. I'm gonna go in with like half of a quarter of a cup, so like an eighth of a cup. One packet of French onion soup. And a quarter cup of water. That's a lot of flavor for that many carrots. I'm gonna throw in a couple more. I'm gonna do three more and that way we'll have a ton of carrots to last us for tonight and then for leftovers as well. So we can cook once and eat twice. Right, three extra carrots going in. Okay, so this is what it looks like and they said to do it for low for three to four hours. Now, if you watched my last video, you'd know that I saved some of these and I still haven't gotten around to planting them and look how big it is. So you can guess what I'm gonna be using for a garnish later on today. Act surprised. Along with our meatballs and crazy carrots, we're gonna do some crispy potatoes. I'm just gonna go ahead and use those washed potatoes. I've said this before, um, I love this style of potato because I don't have to peel them, and I don't have to scrub them, and the skin makes, like when it's baked, roasted, fried, whatever, it just makes it nice and crispy. So I'm just gonna cut them into little pieces just to help with cooking time. And I'm just gonna go ahead and microwave them. So I normally pre-cook them and then sort of roast them right before I need it. So this is how I like to prepare meals ahead of dinner time, just because there's five of us and it's hectic. So I'm just going to do two palmfuls of water, very non-specific, I know. Um, <laughs> that's literally all that you need to put in there. And we're gonna microwave it for 10 minutes. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and prep the mushrooms ready for later on today and cook them. So this is what I had purchased last week and I thought I'm gonna use that up this week because it's not in my nature to waste food. I hate wasting food, um, but we're gonna go ahead and you know add the cost of these to our $15 extra from the budget there. Like I mentioned earlier, if you feel like I'm trying to be misleading or something, I'm not. I just was just using up what was in there and I didn't sort of think about it until after I thought, oh yeah. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna angry, um, angrily use my Happy Chopper. <laughs> this is a little Tupperware one that I've had for like 10 years, but I think they sell like the little 
dupe version, dupe version at Kmart. It's a bit on the blunt side because it's so old because there's little fine bits and then chunky bits. So some of my kids uh, have trouble with eating veggies, like most children, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead and make some really fine, but I'm going to cut some super fine to encourage the kids to eat it because it's hidden in the sauce. I'm going to cut some chunky because I like my mushrooms to be like a meatier sort of texture when I'm eating them. And it absorbs the sauce really nicely after roasting them. So they're sort of like crispy, but then juicy at the same time. Well, that's how I like mine anyway in this recipe. So we're just going to prep that now and we're going to stick that in the fridge ready for later on tonight. To make the nighttime routine easier on me later, I'm also going to go ahead and prep one of the zucchinis that I bought too. I probably should have bought three because I needed one for another recipe later on in the week and one really wasn't enough. I mean, there was plenty of food there, but I could have used two. So we're just going to go ahead and dice this up ready to roast with the potatoes tonight. Now that those are chopped up, we're going to add that to a container ready to put in the fridge along with our other veggies ready for later on today. So we're just going to go ahead and drizzle them with some olive oil and we're going to season it too so we can literally just tip it out onto a tray later on tonight and not have to think about doing anything else. So we're going to season it with some salt, some pepper, and I thought some Italian seasoning would go nicely with this as well with the crazy carrots and the flavors of the meatballs too. We're just going to pop them in the fridge too. Next up, we're going to work on our meatballs now that our oatmeal has had a chance to soak. So we're going to go ahead and put the whole kilo in and we're going to use half a packet of the French onion soup and we're going to use that to be the flavor for these mini meatballs. Now, if you don't want to buy mushrooms, you don't have mushrooms, you know, whatever the reason, uh, you don't need to put them in, you can just stick with this flavor. So I'm just going to add some salt, some pepper, and about a tablespoon and a half of Roy's sister sauce. Just kidding, Worcestershire sauce. Don't mind the baby playing in the background here. Add in one cup of breadcrumbs. Uh, we made these in one of my last videos and we also made croutons and a few other things, some uh, basic staples that you can save yourself some money just using my things you have around the home already. And we're going to add in an egg as well. That's everything that we're going to need. So we're just going to go ahead and mix all of this together until it's really well combined. Now you might have thought in the beginning, like one cup of milk, wow, that's a lot of liquid to be adding to this recipe, but you'll see that it binds together really nicely and it's not sort of sloppy and runny at all. They're still really easy to shape. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to shape that into mini meatballs like you've seen me make here before. Except this time it's going to be like stroganoff mushroom flavor. So one kilo of mince plus one cup of oats and one cup of homemade breadcrumbs equals 35 meatballs. This is how they turned out. You can see they're not soppy and wet and flat. They are holding their shape well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cling wrap that and then store it in the fridge until I'm ready to bake dinner tonight. So I've done the school pickup, I've done the library, I've done, I don't know, a bunch of other stuff, and it is now ready for dinner time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull everything out that I need. So we've got our meatballs. I'm gonna let that come to temperature a little bit so it's not going from cold fridge to hot oven. I don't wanna end up with a crack in my nice new Pyrex dish. So I'm just going to uh, prep an oven tray ready for our vegetables and those potatoes have just been sitting in my microwave this whole time so they've just had some time to cool down and the, you know, the heat and the steam that was in there from when it was cooking for 10 minutes is just going to keep cooking it through. So I'm just going to double check it because I find different breeds of potatoes and so on might take a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, that looks fine. I'm just going to go ahead and drain out that water that I added in when I popped it in the microwave to begin with. So we're going to drizzle in some olive oil to help crisp up the skin and make them nice and crunchy and just the usual basic sort of stuff. It makes it so tasty. Salt, we're going to need some pepper 
and an assortment of herbs and spices. Now, if this isn't the first time you've been here, just the usual onion powder, garlic powder, and I thought for something different, we'll just throw in some oregano and um, some smoked paprika will help with some color as well. Too much makes it too like spicy for the kids, but just a little bit for color works really well. This was their favorite way to have potatoes <laughs> this week. So I'll definitely be doing it again. So we're just gonna give that a nice shake, mix that all through. And then we're going to pop that on our oven tray. So I'm going to do this first, of course, before the zucchini, because these are going to take longer to crisp up and brown up, which is why I'm getting it in first, even before the meatballs, because the meatballs don't take long. Just going to go ahead and spread that out to help them cook evenly in a nice thin layer. Pop that in an oven at 180 until nice and crispy. We're going to check this, of course, and halfway through, we're going to add the zucchini. So we're going to bake the meatballs first because if we just put the sauce in and bake it, it's just going to be mush. So we don't want that. I could have baked them on their own and then browned them up a bit more and then put the mushrooms in. I just wanted to get this done. Um, just one of those days, you know, if you know, you know. So I'm just going to spread out the mushrooms and I'm just taking the larger ones to the edge because they brown quicker at the edge as opposed to the middle of the dish. And I'm just leaving all the fine chopped bits in the middle. And we're just going to go throw that straight in the oven like that. Super easy because we did all of the prep work earlier in the day. This is a meal that I've cooked over and over again, but changing the flavor profile so it doesn't get boring. So this is a really easy budget way to provide a meal for your family, but not be boring. Right, so we're just gonna take the potatoes out, give them a bit of a stir, get them crisped up some even more. Some more, not even more, some more. Okay, and then in the meantime, we're gonna work on that gravy sauce part. So we're gonna use the other half of that French onion soup mix, and we're gonna add it to a cup and a half of water. So we're just gonna give that a stir, and I'm just gonna get that put aside. So my plan is that I'm gonna take whatever is left over from the potatoes from tonight. I'm gonna to use up some red onion, and I'm going to what was I going to say? Now it's gone. I'm just going to chop this up into the same size pieces as the potatoes and the capsicum that I had from, I think it was like last week that I bought that. So this is going to become breakfast hash, which normally you would do in like a skillet or something and you'd crisp up potatoes and whatever else you want really to make a hot breakfast. But this is a school morning the next morning. So I'm not going to have time to chop everything, crisp everything up in the skillet, get everyone fed, dressed, brush teeth, you know, onto school. So I'm going to do this tonight. So then in the morning, it's going to be a super quick way to get a nice hot breakfast on the table with minimal effort. I'm just going to store all of the bits in a like a meal prep container so that when I've got a tray in the oven free, I can go and whack this in the oven as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and divvy this up and I'm going to add some spinach to this as well. Next up, potatoes are looking pretty good. So I'm just going to move those over and make some room for me to be able to roast the zucchini. Another way that you can flavor zucchini is using like the lemons that we bought. You can add some lemon zest as well as some Parmesan cheese, or you can use lemon pepper seasoning, but because of my young children, they will feel like their mouths are on fire. So we went with PG rated zucchini tonight. Right, so I'm just going to go ahead and test the meatballs to make sure that they're holding their shape and that they're brown underneath all of that mushroom that I just dumped on top there because I just wanted to get dinner <laughs> ready and on the table. So we're just going to tip in our French onion soup and then we're going to whack that back in the oven. Now you can just leave it exactly like this. I felt like being extra because I knew that I had sour cream left over from last week's tacos that I wanted to use up and my dish was already packed to the brim as it was. So I couldn't just dollop sour cream on and give it a stir. I needed to pull the meatballs out. So this was a bit of an annoying extra step and I stood there for like a good seven minutes trying to figure out, is there a better way I can do this? But I just thought, no, I'm just gonna pull them all out 
I'm going to add a couple of spoonfuls of sour cream and I'm just going to stir that through, chuck it back in the oven and then blast it while the meatballs are out to try and dry out that sauce a little bit and thicken it up and then we'll circle back. If you didn't have any sour cream, you could use a quarter of a cup of milk and then stir through a tablespoon of corn flour and that way you can make a slurry out of it and that would make it look creamy like this and thicken it up without having to add an extra ingredient if you didn't have it on hand or it wasn't in your budget that week. So I've just thrown the sauce back in the oven to help thicken it up, dry it out and pour these veggies out. So these are looking good to go so I'm going to stick that on the side and then move on to the next part. So I'm going to throw these veggies that I prepped earlier for our breakfast hash in the morning. Now I've got an oven tray free and I forgot that I didn't put any olive oil on season that sort of thing. So I'm going to do that too and I'm going to roast this until it's going to be nice and sweetened. I meant caramelized. You know what I meant. <laughs> the sauce is ready so I'm just going to go ahead and add my meatballs back in so I can serve it in the same dish. Okay, so this is dinner ready. We've got crispy skinned potatoes, some roasted zucchini, our crazy carrots with our uh, windowsill grown uh, garnish and our French onion sort of stroganoff meatballs. And the kids loved it, it was delicious. And we actually ate these meatballs again for night two, just in the burger buns that you saw earlier, those tiger rolls with some cheese, barbecue sauce and some veggies on the side because baby had a fever and hubby made dinner, so I didn't film that night. So um, flipping back, we've had dinner the first night, um, back to these veggies here. I've roasted them, I threw the spinach in, I'm trying to make a little alfoil burrito here to help wilt the spinach because tomorrow morning I want to make preparing breakfast the easiest easiest way possible so I want all of this to be sort of ready to go all right now that that's been sitting there for a little bit while I wash the dishes it's time to tip that into another little uh, meal prep tray so that I can have our hash ready for the morning including the leftover vegetables from dinner of course All right, so it's the next morning. I've got everything prepped from the night before, which I'm super grateful for. So I'm just gonna dump it into my fry pan with some olive oil. Uh, it was a rough night. I am still in my pajamas. So I'm gonna recharge my batteries, make a coffee and sip on that in the sunshine while breakfast is sizzling away there. This was really nice because it was such a rough night. Thank you to Pastor Carlene for thinking ahead for breakfast today. Cheers. <laughs> Now that it's heated through, I'm just gonna make four little uh, holes, dents in the bottom, and I'm going to crack an egg one for each of us, and uh, the baby's not gonna be having this for breakfast, so it'll just be the four of us for this meal this morning. I mean, he did try the potatoes, but that's about as far as he got. I'm just going to go ahead and season that with some salt and I want to add the lid on just to help the egg cook through since it is surrounded by vegetables there. All right, baby's awake, you're doing this one-handed and I'm just going to add some cracked pepper to uh, mum and dad's eggs because the kids won't want that and you guessed it, I'm whipping out the glaze. I've been loving this lately on all of our food just to add flavour and it, you know, it's four dollars a bottle and it lasts forever so it's something that you can um, add to your next grocery list if you can just to level up your food. I like to cook it so that the yolks are still runny and this is beautiful served over toasted sourdough, normal toast or on its own. Up next we've got some corned meat or silver side in the slow cooker. We're going to do broccoli and cauliflower au gratin style and some mashed potatoes just keeping it simple because tonight we're going to cook once and eat twice. Turning this into a different dinner with minimal effort. This hunk of meat is 1.7 kilos because I want to make three meals out of it. So we're going to go ahead and pop it on top of the nest of onion, which is down the bottom. Yes, I wash my hands in between. And then we're going to throw in our vegetables and spices and herbs on top. I will link the recipe below, but I've adapted it slightly. So I used three carrots because I want this to not only be flavored with carrot like a vegetable stock and celery. Uh, these leaves are the best part, by the way. I add them in at the end so that they're nice and juicy and they soak up all of that flavor. I just rip them apart and throw them in. Uh, normally you could you know, use cabbage and things like that. I just didn't add them to the grocery list this week. So what you're going to need is, I did one onion, 
three carrots, one stick of celery plus a bunch of its leaves, two bay leaves, quarter cup of brown sugar, quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, and uh, I just filled it up with water from a kettle. It's not boiled or anything like that. It was just an easier medium for me to just fill up that much water. And I just went ahead and covered that up. Oh, and three cloves I added in as well. Oh, did I mention whole peppers? <laughs> it wasn't in the recipe, but I threw like a tablespoon in for flavor. So I have adapted the recipe that is there, but this is just the way that I like to make it. The recipe does say beef stock. I didn't do that. I just like to use plain water. And I'm just making sure that there is enough water in there to cover it up. And that's everything. We're going to set that on low, normally six to eight hours. And looking at the clock, I've got seven hours to dinner. Now that dinner or the main part of dinner is sorted, I'm going to go ahead and start prepping vegetables for the frittata as well as preparing some make ahead breakfasts to get me set up for the week. So I'm going to start by preparing some vegetables to be roasted, uh, cubed up so they all roast at the same uh, time and then we're going to slice up some vegetables for the top of the frittata and I'm also going to uh, prep some tomato wedges to be roasted as part of the make ahead breakfast. Now as I'm editing this, I'm realizing that this is going to be quite a long video. So I'm just going to have to um, edit and cut snippets of, of each little bit just so that you're not sitting there for an hour and a half uh, watching what I made uh, for dinner. So this side is for the frittata and this side is for the make ahead breakfast. So I've just taken out the roasted vegetables for the frittata about halfway so I can move that aside and make some room for the tomatoes for the make ahead breakfast because the oven's already on right we don't want to give ourselves any more unnecessary things to clean up now you would have seen that I was surprised that my olive oil ran out so I've just had to spritz them with some spray and cook I'm going to season them up with salt and Italian herbs and we're going to whack that back in the oven to finish off Back to prepping for dinner, I'm going to pick off some of these juicy leaves so that I can throw in just a few minutes before dinner will be served. So sorry, uh, forgot to hit record, let me catch you up. Four leaf salad, balsamic dressing, salt, pepper, oregano. Now you were caught up and we're going to throw on some homemade croutons which I made in a recent video and they're covered with olive oil and Italian dressing, salt and pepper as well. So all those flavors work really well together and it's a simple, cheap, easy salad. Moving along, while everything else is on the go, we're going to start on our snags or our sausages for the make ahead breakfast. Now I discovered this accidentally while I was having a hectic morning that you can bake these. I was doing a tough one morning with the kids, uh, a couple of kids are sick, and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna throw these in the oven and bake them and see if that will work. Because I've tried them in the air fryer and they crisp up really nicely. I bet you it would go all right in the oven, and it does. You just need to check on them and turn them over. It is as easy as that. I've just drizzled some vegetable oil in the base and I'm just sort of sliding the first one around to spread that out. And we're gonna start with a half slab of snags and I'm going to freeze the other half uh, for a future meal. We're gonna go ahead and roast these up on uh, 180 until nice and crisp. And I'm just gonna check in with these in between juggling all of the other things. Next up, we're going to prep our scrambled eggs. I'm just going to do four at this stage because not all of the children eat scrambled eggs. Just gonna season them with salt and pepper, add a dash of cream, you can use milk, you don't have to use anything if you don't want to. And we're going to cook that low and slow in the background with some butter. You may have noticed I'm keeping all of my veggie scraps. That's because I have a worm farm that I'm using to nourish my garden with the kids' homegrown herbs and a couple of little side of vegetables and a butterfly garden and bee garden uh, and so I went outside fed them the scraps came in threw the eggs on after the, the butter was melting while I was outside and then I forgot to get the chives that was like half the reason why I bloody went out there so anyway we're just going to give our eggs a stir and I'll be right back Our breakfast tomatoes are ready and our roasted vegetables are ready for the frittata I'm just giving that a check and also checking on my baby who's been quite fussy. But look at him. Isn't he gorgeous? Can't believe how fast he's growing. Did I mention I have three boys? Nine, five and ten months old. 
time's flying anyway switching gears back to the frittata we're going to do eight eggs salt and pepper a dash of cream and i couldn't remember what i bought the cream for forget i probably probably save it so I did a dash of milk too you don't have to do that and then I thought oh why am I doing this now I wanted to wilt the spinach but it was all on the one tray and I didn't want to get another piece of alp oil so I cut it in between the two bits and then I thought oh I'll make a little burrito out of this this isn't working and then I realized that you can't even see what I'm doing anyway oh my god get it together Schmarlene <laughs> Look at me, thinking I was so slick cutting that olive oil down there so I could fold it over to make a burrito. But I've got too much filling. It ends up spilling out like the spinach was the Hulk or something. It's like an angry green burrito. Time to check on our sausages and flip them over so that they get nice and brown on all sides. Pop them back into the oven to brown out the other side so while we work on the frittata. So we're just going to whisk together our eggs. We're going to tip in our roasted veggies and our non-wilted spinach. It didn't go to plan like it did the night before. That's okay. We're going to tip our egg mixture in. We're going to add our slices of tomato, our red onion. We're just going to press that down into the mixture. I mean, you can add other things to this as well. This is a great recipe to do like the night before bin day when you want to use up a whole bunch of veggies. I did a $2 couscous salad in my last video uh, that you can also make to use up ingredients. Sprinkle it with some crumbled feta and we're going to bake that at 180. Uh, since I had some feta left over I just had like a half piece just from the deli. It was like $1.80 or something and it's really nice to garnish some things and make it more special like scrambled eggs. While we wait, I'm just going to prepare some baby yogurt or just yogurt for baby using these food pouches that you can get at Woolies. Um, I love this idea because now that the kids are doing sport and there's, you know, after school activities and we're out and about a lot, I feel like I'm buying more processed baby food. So I thought, why can't I just put my own food in pouches as opposed to you know packing spoons and everything else like that so they come pre-sterilized which is awesome so i'm just going to use the yogurt that i bought and using a funnel uh fill up the little pouches to see um how well they work uh don't mind the fly there uh what i forgot to do was add the lid first like get it together smiling come on this is not your time to shine today is it so yeah use the lids <laughs> and they're really easy to prepare and I put some of these in the freezer so then I can use them as little cold packs and by the time we get to wherever we're going they'll be thawed out enough and nice and cold for his little teethy pegs too because he will be chewing on them like any baby I guess uh, but I've been really happy with these so far so if you want to make your own baby food and you need a way to store it uh, which is easy to use these are reusable so woolly stock them so if you want to try that out i can recommend that they are easier to use than it looks i just did it the most difficult way possible now the sausages are ready the skin is looking nice and crispy and i uh, annihilated one with the pair of tongs there as you can see but no regrets this is an easy way to batch bake sausages for make ahead breakfast it'll save you so much time in the morning now i did have to blot out the oil with a paper towel and then i just threw some like half a bag of spinach leaves in there covered it with some alpha oil to help it wilt Drizzled, drizzled that with balsamic uh, glaze that you saw earlier and this is how everything comes together such an easy way to batch cook snags for a make ahead breakfast while i was filming that last video i half burnt my frittata but it still looks quite pretty <laughs> and there is our side salad ready to go so that is make ahead breakfast and lunch ready for the week Switching gears back to dinner, we're going to go ahead and prepare our broccoli and cauliflower au gratin style and we're going to go and cut those into uh, the similar sized pieces and we're going to blanch them in some chicken stock until they're almost cooked and still bright in colour. While those veggies are on the stove top, I'm going to start prepping our potatoes ready to make mashed potatoes and that way I can just throw them straight into that water after I've taken the cauliflower and the broccoli out just to save time on reboiling water. It's going to have flavor from the veggies and the chicken stock and it just makes my life easier. So pull one thing out and then stick the next thing in. Uh, look, it's looking in the background there waiting for a handout. <laughs> my poor darling's not doing so great in this 30 degree heat. So are you ready to hear Brittany Spears again? I didn't get a clip of me putting the potatoes in the water in the background that you can see there. My apologies, welcome back. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to the au gratin by, I just sort of like to arrange it so it's like green, white, green, white, just cause I felt like it. Uh, and I'm just making sure they're all florets side up, ready to roast. 
Now don't worry, we're gonna be adding a yummy cheesy white sauce before we roast it, but we're actually gonna make a double batch tonight because I wanna make a sauce to go with our silver side for tonight, our au gratin, and enough sauce left over for dinner tomorrow so I can do all the hard cooking tonight and then reap the benefits tomorrow so I get a night off cooking tomorrow. So once your 60 grams of butter is melted, we're gonna go and throw in two tablespoons of plain flour. I like to use a whisk so that way you get no lumps. It's just an easy way that I've figured out to do that. And then once that is melted and that roux has cooked off, we're gonna add in two cups of milk. I've just turned that white sauce down to a simmer so it doesn't boil over while I've got my back turned for like 0.2 seconds because you know it's going to happen, right? You've been there before, you know exactly that it's going <laughs> to happen like that. And I'm going to deal with the mashed potatoes. While I was mining the sauce after seasoning the potatoes, I had a brilliant idea. Why don't I just use this instead of cold milk from the fridge to add to my mashed potatoes? So that's exactly what I did and it was convenient. Plus it helped to make them nice and creamy. I served it with a couple of little pats of butter on top and some celery salt for some flavor and some color. So I did try and follow a recipe, but it wasn't as thick and creamy as I wanted. So we're gonna slurry it up with one tablespoon of corn flour to two tablespoons of water, whisk it in. So we've made a double batch of the white sauce and I wanna flavor it differently. So I wanna make a mustard cheesy sauce for the au gratin and I wanna serve a parsley sauce with the meat for the silver side for tonight that we're also going to use the leftovers for tomorrow's dinner. Parsley sauce, sauce parsley sauce is really easy to make it's literally just parsley and white sauce you could use fresh or dry parsley you can even add a squeeze of fresh lemon juice and lemon zest to brighten it up as well now it's time to assemble our au gratin so i'm just going to add a handful of grated cheese to my white sauce and we're going to add in about a teaspoon and a half of mustard as well before we uh, throw that back onto the heat and whisk that in to melt the cheese. Once melted, we're going to add that to the top of our veggies, layer it with a handful or so of cheese and finish it off with some homemade breadcrumbs. That way it'll add a little bit of crunch and a little bit of texture to this dish to make it a little bit more interesting. And bake until the cheese is browned and the top is nice and crispy. And dinner is served. So we've got our au gratin, we've got our corned meat with parsley white sauce, carrots with some nice juicy celery tips there, our mashed potato, the butter's belt melted, but that's okay. Still tasted great. And this is how much meat we've got left to make a spin-off dinner for tomorrow, plus corn fritters for our lunch meal. So we're gonna get three meals out of this 1.7 kilo hunk of meat to feed my family of five. It is another windy day in the kitchen and we're going to go ahead and prepare a spin-off meal from last night's leftover silver side. We are going to, which is going to be shepherd's pie, and we are going to make corn meat fritters for another lunch meal. And we're also going to try pickling the cucumber that I bought now that they are in, on special, not in special, on special. Now before we go ahead and assemble our shepherd's pie, I need 200 grams of the leftover corn meat to make fritters and I will link that recipe below. So we're just going to put that aside until we need it. I want to make preparing dinner really simple tonight because yesterday was a mammoth day in the kitchen. You saw how much food we made. So today I want to make it like keep it really simple. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, slice everything, chop and dice everything and then warm it up slowly in that large pot there uh, with the white sauce until it all comes together if you were in a hurry you finish work at 5 30 get home got to feed everyone you could easily just microwave it just to sort of get it heated up a little bit and then stick it in the oven to brown off um you know any cheese or anything you have on top this is just how i like to do it this day because i was already going to be in the kitchen so i'm going to take it low and slow while i get some other things done so this is the point that I realize, oh, I'm out of eggs and I wanted to make corn fritters. So I am going to try using an egg replacement, which I haven't used before. So lucky I bought that baking soda. So you need uh, to replace one egg, you need one teaspoon of baking soda and one tablespoon of vinegar. And that's it. And this recipe worked out fine. So I didn't even notice that there wasn't an egg in there. So definitely using this combination again, and I will link it below so you can save it for future reference. 
Next up, we've got our silver side or corn meat fritters and we need three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. Now I'm gonna save myself some money by making it myself by just adding about a tablespoon of vinegar to that three quarter a cup of milk. And we're just gonna set that aside and it's going to kind of curdle a little bit, I guess you could say, thicken up and sour up. And that is a easy budget friendly way to make your own buttermilk at home compared to buying at the store. In the background there, I'm just checking on our shepherd's pie filling. And I just added a dash of milk just to help loosen everything up on the bottom of the pan there. Okay, for our fritters, you're going to need self-raising flour, our egg replacement, buttermilk, 200 grams of chopped silver side, a can of uh, corn kernels. It calls for coriander, I didn't have any, I just substituted that, some oil to shallow fry. And you can serve these with sour cream, sweet chili sauce. Uh, my favorite way would be like tomato chutney and sour cream. You could do zucchini chutney, use whatever you have on hand to make this a budget-friendly meal. So this is what our buttermilk looks like. You can see it's got a couple of little sort of curds in there. It's got a bit of texture. So that's what yours should look like too. If it is still runny, you need to leave it a little bit longer for it to sour up, butter up. I guess you could say. All right, so in a bowl, we're gonna add one cup of self-raising flour. I think that I could have doubled it to get more fritters out of it. I mean, I could have also cooked smaller fritters that would have been crispier and thinner and probably tastier, but you know me, I was just in a hurry trying to get food on the table. So it didn't work out for me this day. But next time I think I'll definitely try doubling it using the same amount of filler ingredients. So one cup of self-raising flour, I didn't even bother sifting it. I'm just trying to get it done over here. I'm just going to season that. Adding in our buttermilk and our egg replacement. And we're just gonna go ahead and whisk that until there are no lumps. For an extra boost of flavor, and you know how much I love to follow a recipe, I'm just gonna add in smoked paprika and I'm also gonna add in just a pinch of the cayenne pepper just for some extra flavor. But if you don't have those ingredients on hand, you don't need them, you can make it just straight up how the recipe in the link says. To assemble dinner, I just sprayed uh, this dish so that nothing would stick. I'm going to add in our leftover meat and veg filling, including the parsley white sauce from last night, now that it's warmed through. I'm going to add a sprinkle of our grated cheese, and I want to spread on top the mashed potato leftover from last night. Because it's gonna be baked again, I added a little bit of milk just to add a bit more moisture back in, and I shape it into a pastry pie crust with like a bit of an edge, because I want it to hold you guessed it, more cheese uh, and some breadcrumbs as well. And we're gonna put that in the oven just to warm through and then brown off the cheese and crisp that up as well. Back to the fritters, we're going to shallow fry them. I'm just gonna sort of um, spread out the mixture a little bit just to help flatten them out so they're not gonna be real like floury in the center and that gross spongy feeling that you get in some fritters. And um, we are going to shallow fry them until nice and crispy and golden. Now over to the side here, I've just been um, slicing some iceberg lettuce, the one that I forgot to put back. I wanna make some good use of it. So I'm just gonna make that into a little side salad garnish little salad and I'm going to use up the lemon there as well because I thought a squeeze of lemon would be really nice on this with you could serve it with mayonnaise as well and I also had an idea you could do like a herbed mayo or even like a spiced mayo so you could add some Tabasco smoked paprika even little chili seeds cayenne pepper to some mayonnaise and do like a spiced mayo with this if you didn't have sour cream tomato chutney you probably have those other ingredients on hand and a squeeze of lemon to add some really nice flavor as well. While I'm juggling the fritters cooking off and then cooling down over to the side, I wanna make a start on some cucumber pickles. This is the first time that I wanna try and pickle something because I've been craving the flavors of it, but not got around to doing it myself and it seems pretty easy. So I've got a sterilized jar there. You probably saw me make my homemade tomato sauce in one of my last videos. I can link that below as well. Um, and we're going to flavor it with some dill. So I'll link the recipe below. It was pretty much one for one cup between white vinegar and white sugar. So I'm just doing one cup because I don't have like seven cucumbers. I have one because I wanted to try it before doing a whole batch and it worked out well. I was happy with it. Um, and I just added a sprinkle of salt to that mixture and we're going to go pop that on the stove top on medium until that's all melted. 
Now in the meantime with the cucumbers, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of salt and I squeezed out the excess moisture. And Henry, you can rub here, him at my feet here chewing on a bit of paper. Um, what was I saying? But he distracted me. So we're just gonna stir that off to the side until it's nice and melted. I've got my cucumbers just sitting on the corner of the sink and then get ready to hear Brittany. Oh, I did it again, I've got to hit record. I put the cucumbers in the jar and sort of sprinkled in about a teaspoon of dried dill cause I didn't have fresh dill or mustard seeds or turmeric like the recipe suggested. I used what I had. I had dried dill, so dill pickled cucumbers it is. And this is a quick, easy two hour quick pickle recipe. Uh, which I will link below for you to try. Now it's said to cool the liquid down. I saw other videos where they did it hot. It's so hot I can't even pick it up with my bare hands. It's still very hot. And I heard that when you do it hot, it makes them crispier, which they were. I did a quick try that not like later on that night and they were tasty. I did wish I did have mustard seeds. That would have made it you know, a lot nicer. But thank you again for joining me for another day in my kitchen. We have got our fritters. I finished off with some crumbled feta and balsamic glaze, a little crunchy lettuce, a squirt of lemon, our pickles, and our shepherd's pie using the corned meat, parsley, white sauce, and veggies left over from last night. Tonight's dinner, we're gonna cook once and eat twice. So we're gonna make mandarin chicken. You're going to need about a kilo of chicken thighs to make it last for the two nights, garlic powder, onion powder, your salt, your pepper, chicken stock and corn flour. And we're gonna go and make this a crispy style chicken. And then we're gonna to toss it into a yummy sweet mandarin sauce or mandarin sauce, depending on what you call it, mandarin, mandarin. I was today years old when I realized that when I've heard people say mandarin chicken, they meant mandarin mandarin as in Chinese, not mandarin as in the fruit, because I looked at a few recipes and I was like, in the sauce, where's the mandarins? There's no, it's this lemon and sugar. <laughs> Where are the mandarins at? Oh, yeah, I was today years old. To a bowl, you're gonna go ahead and use, I would normally use one cup of corn flour when I'm making this, but I, for some reason, didn't need as much today, but normally I would rather too much than not enough. Season that with some salt and pepper. And we're gonna go ahead and add about a teaspoon of garlic powder and onion powder. And also the chicken stock powder as well. Give that a good mix and set that aside. Next up, we're going to prepare the chicken thighs by first I washed them and now I'm going to slice them into little like fingers, I guess, little soldiers and just cutting off all the excess fat and gristly bits as I go. And we're gonna go ahead and put it straight back into the container that I've you know, rinsed everything out in because we're going to use that to just throw our corn flour mixture into. So it's a very easy like cleanup afterwards and the moisture from the chicken that we've washed will help make it into an almost dry batter. While I've still got batter fingers, I'm just gonna go ahead and add my strips of coated chicken to some preheated oil, and I'm just shallow frying them until nice and golden before turning them over. So I do have two pairs of tongs here. So I've got one for when the chicken is raw and I'm adding it in, and then another one when it's cooked to sort of pull them out. So I'm sort of minimizing any cross-contamination there. I did plan on sharing with you a fun activity I did with the kids with these mandarins, but because this video is gonna take a little, it's gonna, it's gonna be, you're gonna be here for a while. Uh, I thought I might share that in my next one, so keep an eye out for that. So for the mandarin sauce, notice the E on the end, it's not mandarin sauce, it's mandarin sauce. I'm just gonna go ahead and use four mandarins, and I'm just going to juice them. If you don't have this, you can use any like fruity citrus, like orange, tangerine, okay, not lemon, and lime because it's going to be way too overpowering <laughs> using four of them but you can make do even with you know bottled orange juice or something like that if you just wanted a bit of citrus flavor and you didn't want to spend any extra money you can just use what you have my first batch of crispy chicken is out and i will mention that I didn't end up with a kilo of chicken at the end because all of that was gone by the time I turned around and juiced my mandarins. The kids and my hubby had come in and eaten that chicken because they said it smelled so good and they wanted to try and they kept on coming back for more. So that'll probably be your hardest part is making sure you've got some fried chicken left to put in your dish. So I measured it just to be sure. So I ended up with three quarter of a cup of mandarin juice. We're gonna go in and add one quarter of a cup of soy sauce, just your normal light soy sauce is fine. If you have dark soy sauce, you can use that just a little bit less because it's normally a stronger, saltier flavor. Adding in half a teaspoon of 
dried garlic and a quarter of a teaspoon of dried ginger if you have the fresh version or the minced version you are welcome to go ahead and use that if you wanted to layer some more flavor you could do like a quarter teaspoon of chinese five spice or just like a pinch of allspice if you wanted to add in about a quarter cup of brown sugar and a loaded tablespoon of corn flour maybe a tablespoon and a half and that was like a dessert spoon or like a cooking tablespoon <laughs> so i'm just going to make that into a slurry because you know you know you've been here before you've been in my kitchen before we're going to slurry it up so just adding a little bit of water so it's a liquid to minimize lumps because i hate having lumpy sauce and i hate having to get lumps out of sauce it is so labor intensive <laughs> why is it so hard add a splash of rice wine vinegar if you have some if you don't it is okay it will taste delicious as it is give that a good whisk and then stick that on low in the background to help you juggle all the things here i am just checking left what is it back left back right i sing like a little song to myself to make sure i turn the right one on because i've almost burnt the stove top down like at least three times when i've put the wrong one on is that is that just me or does that happen to you too no okay <laughs> Who made the sauce? I made the sauce. Who got the sauce? I got the sauce. To help bulk up this meal to make it last two nights, we're going to eat the rainbow. We're going to finish off the red onion from the frittata, adding in a couple of carrots and a zucchini. To help make this meal look a little bit more interesting, I'm just slicing the zucchinis like this, just so that they look like little flowers now that it's spring, and just to make it a little bit fun for the kids to eat too. So go ahead and just stir fry them until you know just almost tender because stir fries are meant to be still crispy right not like soggy and braised and we're going to add in our sauce and our chicken and we're just going to go ahead and stir that through so that it's all evenly coated in that delicious sweet slightly salty mandarin sauce i served this over plain rice I'm just garnishing it with some sesame seeds. You by all means don't need to do this. I just have a bag of sesame seeds at all times in the pantry. So just for this reason, actually, I just like to garnish with it. And it just helps to make it look really special. And it's not something that costs a lot of money. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, add a little small amount of spring onions that I have left on my nub of <laughs> spring onion sitting on my windowsill. My little slices of mandarins for a little bit of color, although it is already colorful and beautiful. I think this would have been the kids' favorite dinner all week. They asked for more. The kids thought it smelled like KFC and they enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any suggestions of some content that you would like me to make, so lately I've been doing a little bit of combination of lifestyle and cooking, but if you just want me to get back in the kitchen and do just more food, you let me know what you would like to see. All right, well, thanks again for spending your time with me. Time is precious, so I appreciate every minute that you spend with me. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so to help encourage me to keep on going because I am having fun making these videos, but juggling my you know, three boys, family and life and things like that, it's always nice to know that whoever is watching this appreciates the love and care that I put into these videos. So I would love it very much if you would subscribe. All right, well, thank you very much and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now. Tell me you're a boy mom without telling me you're a boy mom. This is my fly swat. You know what season it is. Not spring, fly season. This is driving me nuts. So if you see me just like swatting it in, I'm coming Henry. If you see me just like swatting at invisible stuff, that's flies, it's fly season. Can you like just